Hi, this is Sam. Today I'm gonna talk you through a piece of music that I've made using various orchestral tools libraries. And I'm also gonna dive in to show you some extended tips and techniques that you can use to really make your own sound with these and take your writing to another level. Right, to start off with, I'll dive straight into the piece of music and then we can talk about it afterwards. So my main concept for this piece was to create a very sinister feeling and a feeling of malevolence. However, rather than going with a kind of very sound design-y score, I decided to, to take something that used a lot of grand and, and big textures to convey that. It's something that my favourite composers do. Mika Levi's Under the Skin utilises this a bit. Colin Stetson's Hereditary does this massively and, and very, very well. And then Annihilation with Ben Salisbury and Jeff Barrow, it's a little bit more electronic, but it, it does verge into that part. So I wanted to go with a lot of these, yeah, very grand textures, but create an underlying sense of uncertainty within, within the music. So what I'll do now is I'll dive through the instruments that I've used and the libraries, and then we'll go into some further techniques that I use to achieve this sound. I'll start with the lead melodic lines that I've used, firstly being the, the violins, and this is from Berlin Strings. I'm using two different articulations here. I'm using the Espressivo longs and sustains, both only legatos, and I use these to, to create these really long kind of sweeping lines that you can hear, you know. And if we go into my legato settings here, you can see that I'm pretty much only using portamento as I can be slightly ham-fisted when I write. And to ensure that I'm constantly getting these uh, portamento transitions and legatos, I just want to make sure that they're always coming out. And then I'm key switching here between sustains, which are very much, you know, when I don't want these, these crescendos and these swells that the espressivos give, I can then transition very nicely in between these and it's a very natural performance. I don't have to think about too much going back in and, and tweaking things when I, when I go. So now I'm going to just dive into some of the other techniques that are going on in the string section. We've heard the main lead part, um, so I'll, I'll take that out and we'll go now to these violin effects and the first thing that I, I've gone for here is the pizzicato tremolo and I really like these just for the, the, you know, the, the very uncomfortable nature that they have and they're very, very effective at building a, an unsettling feeling. So 
So next up, we pass the melody and we pass the texture over and we go from a very string orientated instrumentation into, you know, we pass the melody over to the brass and the woodwind. Woodward aren't saying very much. Again, they're just providing texture and the horns and the trumpets are, are taking a lot of the lead lines here. But one thing I used in this transition were the polymaps and I used a kind of split, split articulation from trills in the clarinets going in between sustains and back and forward pretty seamlessly. And you can do this really nicely in Sign Player with the polymaps. And I'll show you what's going on here. And so now we pass the melody over to the trumpet as the brass start to take over the lead part from, you know, the A section, if you will. And what's doing this is that we've got Berlin Brass and we've got the Trumpet One Zampano. And this is just this very broad, big playing, very proud. And this really helps, you know, give this feeling of, of triumph and, you know, foreboding, but with a very big sound. I'm just going to solo these as they are. So now that we've got the main melodic content covered, I want to go into some of the more textural parts of this piece. One thing I really want to encourage is that it's one thing to use melody to convey a feeling, but I think there's also another layer on top of that, where if you look at it from an audio perspective and you look at it from manipulating audio to really express yourself and to take an idea a step further. The first one is Whispers, and this is from Babel. And I'll just play this entire section on its own. There's a couple of things going on, but we'll start with the Whispers. Whilst I loved the sounds of them and I loved the way that they sat, I wanted to create a little more movement with them. And one way I did this was with the modulator inside Logic. And I'm sure a lot of other doors have this feature. I used an LFO here to affect the pan so that the these whispers are moving through the stereo field pretty randomly and they're going at different rates. I've then used another modulator and used this LFO to modulate the LFO of the secondary modulator. This means that the pan is moving at a random rate and also randomly within the stereo field. And I feel like this just really reinforces that feeling of uncertainty and, and confusion. It's very disorientating and uh, makes you feel a little bit seasick, which I really love. Now I'm going to move on to the percussion and I'll just play it on its own here. Very low bass drum. For this, I'm using Berlin percussion and it's bass drum, single hits, very thunderous. And there's a little bit of processing on it, creating this scanning feeling um, with this resonant frequency and I'll play it dry and then I'll play it with the processing and talk you through a little bit what's going on there. So here it is dry. You know, I just wanted it to be a heartbeat just existing in the subs. Just, you know, this thunder that's going on. I'll now talk a little bit about the processing that I've done to kind of create this scanning feeling. I'm sending the bass drum to a distortion, just a stock one again, clip distortion. And then sending that distorted signal to a stereo delay, which is creating this scanning feeling. So this is with processing. And the last thing that I want to show you 
is something that's quite unique to these libraries and that is the ability to pitch bend entire sections something that Mika Levi does throughout the Under the Skin score and I love it I think it's really really cool I'll play it firstly with brass and I'll take the entire brass section and I'll play it to you now <laughs> just minuscule amounts can have a huge effect. With the brass, it's actually fairly natural and could almost be, be live. But when we go and we, you know, use this on an entire string section, the effect is, is, is bizarre, but very, very effective. <laughs> so what I really want to encourage and I think what my main message is, is that don't necessarily treat these libraries, uh, you know, the same way that you would if you had an orchestra in front of you. You can actually do far more things and you can experiment way more with them. And I think that is so powerful and using all of these extended techniques and the breadth actually of these libraries as well, you know, being able to create very minimal scores, you know, up until huge, huge textures and things like that, that you can really find your own voice in between that. And I would really encourage you just to dive in and experiment with these and really find your own voice through them. So that's it from me. If you've got any questions, put them into the comments and we'll get back to you. Berlin Strings and the Berlin Series is now available on the Mighty Sign Player and all information will be in the description. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions and have a good day.